scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Now, this is not my message, but I just think I should, I should digress for a minute and show us from the Word of God at least four areas of joy in a believer's life number one is called the joy of salvation the, there is there is a dimension of joy that comes when you receive jesus christ the joy of salvation number two the joy of walking in purpose the joy of walking in your divine assignment there is a dimension of joy that comes to the believer when you find your place in life when you find your destiny in Christ, your divine assignment, and you are walking in it. Number three, the joy of knowing that you are helping and transforming lives. There is the joy that comes to you when you know that for as long as you are alive and breathing, you are seeing that your life is helping people, you are making an, a difference, you are making impact, you are helping people know Jesus, you are helping humanity, you are helping your society to become a better place. There is a joy that comes. And then number four, there is the joy that comes, I call it the joy of producing results by the word. There is a dimension of joy in your heart when you walk the principles of the kingdom and they produce for you. Now, there are many other dimensions of joy, but I just thought to just pick four. Number one, again, very quickly, is the joy of salvation. If you are saved and that joy is not in your heart, it was not true salvation. It's called good news. Joy. Number two, there is the joy that comes when you discover and are walking in purpose, your divine assignment. Today we are celebrating the opportunity to bless this whole assembly because a man answered that call. And for many years, he, uh, he, he has, has gone on this journey of faith through the thick and thin, loving Jesus and inspiring so many. Many ministries have been birthed from Dr. Jordan's apostleship. And today we celebrate what he is doing because he found his place in life and destiny. Many have found their place. So there is the joy of knowing that you are walking in purpose. Number three, there is the joy of knowing that you are transforming lives. It is a very terrible thing to live your life breathing air and, and just eating and your life is not counting. As far as kingdom come is concerned and as far as the transformation of lives and territories and nations are concerned. Maybe this is a word for someone just listening to me. It's time to sit down and ask the Lord, what is my life about? What is my role and my contribution to this agenda called kingdom come? I'm tired of, of gallivanting left and right the shores of this earth. I want to find my place. I want to find the joy that comes in knowing that your life is is transforming others your life is making a notable impact and then finally the joy of producing results by the word let me tell you this i do not know anybody who has engaged the word and who continues to engage the word productively and it produces for him consistently who does not have joy it is not only the results the joy of knowing 
the joy of mastery, the joy of understanding the ways of God, knowing that you can transport spiritual realities from the realm of the spirit and make them manifest here and now is joy unspeakable and even full of glory. I can take restoration from the realm of the spirit and translate it into a reality. I can take wealth from the realm of the spirit and translate it into a reality. I can take the anointing of the Holy Ghost from the realm of the spirit and translate it into a grace that speaks here and now. Powerful, powerful. The joy that comes from engaging the word and transporting spiritual realities from the realm of the spirit, making them manifest here and now back to our discussion so this is the second reason why we need the manifestation of the grace of god fullness of joy joy is a big deal to the believer the bible ties many aspects of the believer's victory to joy ask that you will receive that your joy may be complete number three why do we need a manifestation of the grace of god in our lives not just an awareness not just a consciousness but that it needs to be translated to our lives here and now it is the way the father and the son receive glory the father and the son jesus christ are glorified when the grace of god is made manifest in our world in our lives here and now matthew chapter 5 and verse 16 jesus is teaching in what we call the beatitudes matthew 5 and verse 16 it says permit your light let your light so shine before men you see that now not in the realm of the spirit let your light so shine before men that they may see here you go again that they may see your good works so it is light in the realm of the spirit. But then when it comes to this realm, it is translated and converted to good works. It says, and glorify your father, which is in heaven. So our good works, the results that come out of our believing, that if we truly claim that there are multifaceted possibilities in the Christ, and we sustain the technology to convert them into dimensions that are relatable here in our world, the Bible says, the Father is glorified, the Son is glorified. John 15 and verse 8. Jesus is still teaching. John 15 and verse 8. Herein is my Father glorified. That means this is how my Father takes glory. That ye bear much fruit. Not small fruit, not little fruit. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. In my bearing much fruit, the Father is glorified. In my bearing much fruit, the Father is glorified. That means if I do not bear fruit, I rob God of an opportunity to be glorified here on earth. Galatians 1 and verse 24, popular scripture. It says, and they glorified God in me. And they glorified God in me. Galatians 1 and verse 24. And they glorified God in me. And they glorified God in me. That because of the manifestation of the grace of God that is at work in your life in such a dimension and proportion that dumbfounds principles principalities and powers that defies the wisdom of men people can look at your life as an epistle you become a sign and a living wonder very very powerful so watch this the grace of god provides access but that is only one step having access to the grace of god does not necessarily mean that you have enjoyed the benefit of that grace it means you can enjoy the provisions having the grace of god means that i can enjoy the life of joy divine health for instance i can enjoy prosperity i can enjoy a life of victory i can enjoy dominion over principalities and powers i can enjoy longevity i can enjoy all of the possibilities that are in the christ as revealed through scripture now let me say this here's my bible here the bible represents the boundary of god's commitment to the believer 
God is not committed. God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provisions allowed from scripture. Now, it does not mean God is that limited. It means that he has covenanted that this is the jurisdiction of his participation in a believer's life. That means whatever scripture does not allow, whatever the grace of God has revealed in scripture does not allow, God will not do it, even if he can do it. Please understand this. So we study scripture among other reasons so that we can understand the jurisdiction, the boundary of God's commitment in and to our lives. That is why it is dangerous to not be a student of scripture. You will, you will, you will communicate spirituality and your Christianity simply based on superstition. There are things other gods may do and other idols may do that God does not do. Why? Not because he's less powerful, but because he has limited his operation to the provisions allocated from scripture. So the Bible is the boundary of God's commitment to the believer. Every dimension of grace I want to access, I search the scripture by the spirit of revelation and then I find patterns that connect to various dimensions of grace. Let me say this as we prepare to pray. Write this down. Number one, the grace of God is not just limited to salvation like new birth. The grace of God is multidimensional. It's one of the most powerful revelations in my teaching you would be hearing. Multidimensional. Grace like wisdom, grace like love has dimensions. To limit the grace of God to just the dimension that saves men from sin is insulting the might, the potency and the greatness of God. Salvation from sin is very important. That is the doorway to the life of God. But that is not the only possibility that the grace of God can provide. There is saving grace. There is healing grace. There is lifting grace. There is grace that translates to the anointing, empowerment, supernatural empowerment to operate in God's dimension, God's frequency of results. Limiting yourself to just the grace that saves. When you are now saved, it makes it look like you do not need that grace again. We are saved by grace. We live only on the strength of God's grace. Let me wrap up this session by attempting to now reconcile the factions as far as the grace teaching is concerned here is what i believe has been the age-long controversy between believers ministries and i'm sent to the body of christ and i love the body of christ and so i speak as one who is part of this great body and it boils down i believe to imbalances the first imbalance that i would want to by the grace of god solve is it comes from the very, the, the incomplete awareness or consciousness of the full scope of the understanding of God's grace or his methodologies in general. Now, every time God has had to operate in the earth, it has always been God and man in partnership. Please, please, you need to get this. You need to get this. The next session I'm going to be teaching on the other aspects. But then please understand that anything that has to do with the earth realm, man is not absent and man is not isolated. To the point that when Jesus Christ needed to die, he became a man. He did not die as a spirit being. Today, he has ascended to heaven as a man. Do you know why? So that he can come back to the earth. If he went just as a spirit, he would need to become a man again to come back to the earth. This is very important. The man, Jesus, seated at the right hand of the, of the father and the angel said he would return back in the same way he left. This is very powerful. 
without a body you are not authorized to function in this domain of god's kingdom it's called the law of territory and so it is important for you to understand that when it has to do with any kind of operation on earth there is a participatory role that man plays the cheapest of them is our salvation and even that we don't just receive generically there is a place of accepting that that report is true then communicating our need for God either by walking to a stage if it's in a church you are called or at least by declaring breaking down going down on your knees those those actions are not adding to salvation they are the participatory role in receiving that which Christ has done so the first mistake or the first error is the teaching that believers do not do anything else the moment there is a consciousness of God's grace they only believe and receive it depends on what is being said if that receive means just to speak and verbalize then I think there may be a problem there it takes more than that there are actions that are required to fulfill certain conditions that allow certain dimensions of God's grace to find expression now no Notice, the Bible says that the grace of salvation, that is the one that has appeared to all men. It is not bring salvation that appears all to all men. The, there are graces that provide certain other advantages. They don't just appear at random. You pursue them by satisfying the conditions that have been made to receive them. Otherwise, everybody will be equally anointed. Otherwise, everybody will be equally used by God. Our results should not change if it is the same grace that is at work in everybody. Please do not miss tomorrow's session because it will, it will add life to what I'm just sharing now. So anyway, back to our discussion. We have a dimension of this understanding. And so it has, in a way, um, um, and, and with all honor to the body of Christ, it has produced quite a Christianity of irresponsibility where many people hand over any and all aspects of their lives to jesus christ they just feel that if god wants to bless me i've been blessed if god wants to lift me i've been lifted if god wants to heal me i've been healed so i don't need to do anything and their lives continue to go down again and again and their lives become a reproach that does not give god glory and then on the other hand we have those who continue to act as though it is their action that fabricates grace from somewhere they do not act from the awareness that the substitutionary sacrifice of christ is finished and what they are doing is they are participating to make it manifest not necessarily to make it happen it has happened in christ our concern right now in the kingdom is the manifestation of that which is finished so the my prosperity today happens because i am already blessed for instance my prosperity is the mechanism that gives evidence to the blessing my healing does not suddenly um make healing new in the realm of the spirit it's been there but when it is made manifest i have transported that reality from the realm where it is finished to the realm where it is needed right now this is very powerful we are not just supposed to take action until that consciousness is crystallized when believers start taking actions and their actions is based on an effort to make things happen outside of the assistance of christ that is what the bible calls works the bible does not call action works the bible calls action that is not based on the consciousness of the grace of god so please take note the grace of god does not stop action let me repeat this the grace of god does not stop actions believers have responsibilities Re believers have conditions that the bible mandates that we meet to release and manifest certain dimensions of the grace of god but that that action is secondary the first the first assignment is to bury in our consciousness the awareness of what grace is and the reality of the finished work of Christ. 
So when you pray for a believer from the standpoint of the finished work of Christ, when you minister to a possessed person or a, a demonic person or a, a whatever kind of uh, um, issue that needs deliverance, it is not the effort of the laying on of hands and the speaking that suddenly makes God move. No, you are tapping into a realm where that possibility has been finished. What you are merely doing is engaging the principles that translate those realities and make them become true here and now. Are we together now? So this is very important. Please make sure you stay with me as we take the next session because this is very, very important. By grace, through faith. By grace, through faith. As many as received him, they received him. Then they encountered power. They received him and they encountered power. How did they receive him? Through the information that they heard called the gospel of salvation. And then they were empowered to become. They were now manifestations of those things that they received. This is very powerful. This is very, very powerful. And believers must come into that, that consciousness. Christ Chapel International Churches, please hear me. I... I stand in partnership and in faith with every man of God who has ministered so far in this session and in this conference to challenge you that even though we are in very trying times, I want you to know that the word of God remains true. The Bible says heaven and earth will pass away. It will pass away, but his word remains true. His word abides forever because he upholds all things by the word of his power. The grace of God, the consciousness that we belong to a family that is limitless. That my limitation and your limitation is not a reflection of God's limitation. And we must upgrade our understanding through illumination. Are you seeing the reason why the teaching of the word is very powerful? The teaching of scripture, the teaching of the word is the spiritual mechanism by which the saints upgrade in their understanding. They upgrade in their understanding. Ephesians chapter 1, when you begin to read from, I think, verse 16 down, Paul was praying, speaking over the church in Ephesus. And he says, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. What is the content of the prayer? Verse 17. He says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. 18 says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Other versions say flooded with light. He says that ye may know. That is it. That ye may know. Paul wants to take away ignorance from our lives. And he says that ye may know. There are certain things that if we do not know, it will cost us. I am limited as a person without Christ. I am limited as just a sociological being coming from my background. But that when I come into Christ, there is a grace, a compendium of limitless possibilities. God's own realm of reality is made accessible to me through the office of this personality called Jesus the Christ. That means if I do not encounter Christ, I have not accessed the authorized doorway. Listen carefully. Christ is the doorway to God's grace. Christ, in fact, is the only authorized doorway. Notice, authorized is the key word here. There are other routes by which individuals try to peep into various dimensions of the grace of God. It will surprise you to know that divination and witchcraft and sorcery and all of these manifestations of darkness that take advantage of the sun, take advantage of the moon and the stars, all of these things, they are simply spiritual ways of attempting to tap into several dimensions of the grace of God. But it is not through the authorized channel. Jesus himself said, I am the door. If a visitor comes into your house, there are many ways he can enter your house. He can jump the fence and enter your house. He's inside. It is your house. He can follow through a window. He's in your house. 
he can follow through the canal the gutter that leads outside he's in your house but none of those avenues are the authorized ways there is a gate and there is a door only he who comes through the door is welcomed anybody who comes through another route even though he's in the house there is a security system designed to fight you this is why there is no other name listen to me when we advocate jesus and we advocate an encounter with the son of the living god it is not religious fanatism to migrate people from any other religion or belief system into what we call christianity it is more than that that jesus the christ of god is the only one who has been given the authorization to usher men into the life of god jesus the son of the living god jesus the door jesus the hope jesus the manifestation of the father's love jesus the custodian of the grace of god jesus the giver of every good thing let me pray for someone right now as we attempt to wrap up today's session you're listening to me from any part of the world and from the church and you're saying apostle listening to you i have seen that i've just been a christian or i've just been around the things of god but I've not truly encountered Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, not just as an initiation into a religion called Christianity, but a relationship, the faith life, access to the grace of God. I want to pray with you, and I want you to mean it from the depth of your heart. This is no show. Let it be from the depth of your heart. You're about to experience a translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son, securing your eternal destiny and also guaranteeing your victory here and now. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you are the son of God. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe in Jesus. And tonight, I receive your life into my spirit. I confess that you are Savior. I confess that you are Lord. You died for me. You shed your blood for my sins. You rose again on the third day. And now you are seated in a position of victory. I declare that I'm a child of God. I declare that from today, the grace to walk in victory power to live above sin above the flesh above satan and above the grave i receive it now i declare that i go forward ever and backward never in jesus name amen and amen i bless and i congratulate you for making this noble decision I want to encourage all of you who have made this decision if you are around the church there let me encourage the pastors or the elders or all those in the committees that uh, if if you can have these people and just have a way of receiving their information to just follow them up the lord bless you in the name of jesus let me pray for you father in the name of jesus i pray for all who are viewing this broadcast first for this great family the platform that I'm ministering uh, through and then I pray in the name of Jesus Christ for all who are viewing from other regions in the name that is above all names may your grace speak over their lives that from today we'll begin to walk in this consciousness that God is unlimited and that Christ has become that gateway that doorway that access into the unlimited possibilities that are contained in God and I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you will help us to walk in that consciousness and also to obtain the empowerment that comes by sustaining that mind of Christ I bless everyone under the sound of my voice and I declare that everything that represents a challenge in your life in this conference I agree with you I lend my voice and my faith with that of Dr. Jordan, your father and pastor, I declare in the name of Jesus that you are completely 
healed, you are delivered, you are transformed. I speak breakthrough in the name of Jesus. And I speak particularly to as many of us who are yet to be serious with our walk with God. You're saying, Apostle, I love God, but here and there, I'm just casual about my spiritual life. I pray for a fresh hunger, that the things of God will become an obsession for you. You will love the word of God. You will love the ministry of prayer. You will love fellowship with the truth of God's word. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you in the name of Jesus. Finally, let me encourage you, please, Join the next session and make sure that your heart is open to receive because I'm going to be praying. I'm going to be speaking over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you and thank you again. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos. Kata Branda Kata Bakotosko for Brekateka Nekata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.